Hello everyone and welcome to this Paint With Me video. This painting is inspired by a headpiece that Philip Tracy made for Alexander McQueen's spring-summer 2008 runway. It was a big change for me. I'm using bold colours when I normally steer well clear and you might notice I made some changes to the way I draw and paint faces too. For this video I asked my patrons, you on YouTube and my followers on Instagram to shoot me some questions about art. But before we get started, I want to thank my patrons for supporting my work and helping me to spend more time making YouTube tutorials. If you're interested in becoming my patron and you'd like to check out everything you get in return for your support, like full length art tutorials, my step by step process, sketchbook pages, whips and all the other things that no one else gets to see, then head to patreon.com forward slash nerd or click on the link in the description. So I'm going to start with questions from my patrons, and up first is Faye. Faye asked me, is your style where you want it to be, or are you planning on or hoping to change it? This is a really interesting question because I switch between a more realistic style and a slightly more graphic style in terms of um, harsher line work and slightly more pronounced features. And I'm trying to train my eyes and my hands to collaborate a bit better so that I can find a consistent middle ground. So I'd say probably, yeah, I'm very happy with my style, but I would say probably that I am still working towards something that I feel is very consistent. But I think that's what's interesting about this question is that I think a lot of people have very slight movement between all of their works that they move between these two points and that's what helps style evolve. So we keep trying things and going, no, don't like that. Or we try something and go, yeah, I really like that. And I want to incorporate that into more of my work and make sure that it's something that I want to take forward as something that is recognizably my style. So yeah, a little bit more work to do, probably, you know, as long as I'm painting, there will be <laughs> work to do in that respect. But right now I'm kind of happy, yeah. Autumn asked me what my favourite colours are from what brands and why. So this is about watercolours. And Autumn has an amazing collection of handmade paints. Um, <laughs> enough to make me go green with jealousy. And I don't own anything specialist like that yet. I'd love some A Gallo colours in the future. And I'm keeping my eye on their September shop restock. There's a dragon's blood red coming, I think, and I've seen it teased on Instagram and I, oh man, I really, really, really want that colour. So yeah, at the moment, not really, but I religiously use Winsor & Newton's professional series of paints. And within that, I consistently use their Winsor Red, Winsor Yellow and Winsor Blue, um, or I alternate the Winsor Blue with an ultramarine. And so those are probably my favourite colours. If you were to give me a limited palette of those three and Payne's Grey, and I could only use them for the rest of my life, I'd be really happy. And then similar colours in my Sennelier palette. I bought that as a rather extravagant treat for myself once. Um, it was on sale, but it was, yeah, a bit of an investment. <laughs> and I love them so much. I, I save them for things like commissions because I'm too afraid of running down. And honestly, the Payne's Grey is nearly gone. So <laughs> um, within that, I use the Indian Yellow, the Bright Red, and the Ultramarine Blue as well. So again, three primary colours. And honestly, those are just my go-tos. If anything is run down in my palette, it's always colours like that. Lee asked me what other artists inspire me. So artists that inspire me, I'm assuming we're not talking about historical. I mean, we could be, but I'll come on to that in a bit because I know someone's asked me about something to do with that. But modern day, like in the social media kind of scene, so many artists inspire me and too many to mention, let's be honest. But if I was to rattle a few off the top of my head, it would be Coffee Cats. Her rendering is perfect. Pat Sue's work just gives me life. Kellogg's Loops, of course, um, Audrey Eau Claire, Cyan Art, her work with alcohol markers is impeccable, Paper Flan, Maddie Harper, um, Nick Runge. I mean, see, the list could go on and on and on and on and on. I could make a whole video talking about who they are and why I love their work. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave their links in the description below if you want to check any of them out. I highly, highly recommend it. 
Sam asked me, do I have a favorite piece of classical art? If so, which piece? So yeah, I do. My favorite piece is L'Ange Deschou. And for any French speakers out there, please forgive me for my accent. I've just butchered your language. Um, but yeah, the, fall, the Fallen Angel, it's, um, it's an incredible piece with quite intense lighting. The angels in the background are sort of smudged and not really there. And that was quite unusual for the time. And he looks angry and sad and secretive all at the same time. And that kind of mood definitely seeps into my work, into my aesthetic. Sam also asked if there's a movement in art history that's really inspired me. Yeah, there is expressionism, but you won't see it in my work. I just really, really love, I'll seek it out when I go to a gallery because the way they build values um, and form with very broad brush strokes and bright colours or quite dull colours, whatever it is, it just fascinates me. And it has since I was a teenager when I learned about it in school. So yeah, you know, people like Franz Marc, Egon Schiele, um, I just, yeah, can't get enough of it. <laughs> Victor asked me where I learned watercolours. So this is pretty much a sort of multi-pronged answer. Um, first of all, I taught myself quite a lot of what I know. I'm very determined. Uh, it's one of my character traits, I suppose. And I don't like failing. So I persistently worked at watercolours. I failed a lot. The amount of paintings that I've thrown away or restarted. You know, I've had a concept and I've just gone with it. And I'm not happy. So I started again and then I'm not happy and I start again. People can't believe sometimes that I will repaint something six times to get it to the, where I want it to be. But sometimes techniques with watercolour don't always work out and you're learning as you're painting, often using a new technique to get a new effect in your painting. So you have to be prepared for failure. And I think that's true of any medium. And a lot of hours of work go into finding out how to control that medium and get what you want from it. And on the note of getting what you want from it, people's work that you see that inspires you to get into a particular medium help to push you further because you look at that work and you say, okay, my skills aren't up to scratch. So how do I encourage myself to get my skills up to a level where I'm happy with them, where I'm as happy with them as I am looking at these people's work. And so seeing other people doing things that you don't know how to do yet is, is very valuable in that teaching process and that learning process. Then Gabe asked me if I had the opportunity to be an apprentice or learn from a classic artist that's not, you know, among us today, who would it be and why? So I mentioned his name earlier and it's Egon Schiele. His work, um, I can't get enough of it. It's... I learned about him when I was a teenager again, and we weren't really taught about him at school. I kind of had to find him myself because we were taught about much more popular artists and his work is quite sexual. And I think that if he was around today painting what he has painted already, his work would still be considered very relevant and very contemporary. The way he uses block colors, but also how he uses quite dingy colors amongst very vibrant colors to convey form and value with these very staccato brush strokes. Um, it fascinates me. I don't really have another word for it. And yeah, so this question is sort of a bit similar to who would you want to have dinner with if you could only pick six people? Well, I'd pick one and I'd pick him. So there you go, that's my answer. Okay, so moving on to questions from Instagram and YouTube. I've got Sneha Paul who asked me, how long did it take to get recognized on Instagram? I'm a newcomer and it's hard to keep up. Oh boy, is it hard to keep up. <laughs> um, I think everybody's story is different. Everybody's experience is different. So it's kind of hard to give you advice. The real advice I can give you, which some people inevitably aren't gonna like, is just keep working hard at what you're doing and keep being consistent with your posting schedule, but don't burn yourself out. You know, if it doesn't work for you, post when you like, you know. Um, but keep practicing your craft, make friends with people, join in in community events, um, but do those things genuinely, you know. 
um, and you'll find that you'll end up supporting each other and creating really strong friendships. Like, I genuinely, when I talk to some of my friends in real life about, oh, my friend so and so, they're like, oh, where do you know them from? I'm like Instagram. They're like, oh right, do they? You, have you have you met them before? I'm like, no, they live in Bulgaria. <laughs> And honestly, like, that's the wonderful thing about it. And naturally you start building up like a, almost like a clique, but that makes it sound a bit sort of exclusive and it's not. The art community is very open to new people. So I think the way to do it is just by joining in and being present and celebrating other people's work. And you'll naturally find that people come to celebrate yours as well. The next question is from Magical Sparkles. So uh, they asked me, I love that username. They asked me what my top three favorite movies are. And you're gonna think I'm completely crazy because they're nothing like each other. But I have to say, my f the first one I'll tell you is Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. That film I watch every single Halloween. Um, it is, I can't explain why it's my favourite film because I don't really know. I think it's just something about the world and <laughs> if I say the law, I don't mean like I'm being really serious about practical magic. <laughs> um, I just mean that the, the world that the writers and the directors built um, is just very attractive to me. I don't know. It's, it's, there's no real magic. You don't see anything. There's no sparkles everywhere. It's just, it's subtle and it just happens. And the story is fantastic and I love it. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, Kill Bill, volume one and two, because I don't believe that you can watch one and not the other. Um, those films kick ass, man. They are, I, I didn't have much reference. I went away to school and it was quite remote. So my cultural reference is quite limited. And even when I was at home, it was in the age where we had like VHS players and you, or well, no, that's not true. That makes me sound much older than I am. DVD players, but we didn't have streaming services. So what we had on DVD was what we watched and we watched those films over and over and over again. So when I saw Kill Bill for the first time, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. I didn't have any reference to the spaghetti westerns or anime um, and that film knocked me for six and I can still watch them and not be bored to this day. Just beautifully written, beautifully shot, and they're cool. <laughs> um, and then my third one, I have to say is Mean Girls, um, and Call Me Basic, but it's just so quotable. It's such good fun. Um, and yeah, I still want my pink shirt back. <laughs> Elise Lisanne asked me, where do you find your inspiration for your art? A couple of people actually asked me this. Multiple places. So I read a lot. I read a lot of science fiction, but I also read, I kind of read anything. I like dystopias. Um, I just think they're, they're never very happy. And I don't know why, but I find that really attractive in a book. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but yeah, I read a lot and I read a lot of sci-fi and uh, you won't see those references in my work, but what I do put into my work is the feeling that those worlds and those situations convey. And it will never be very specific. It, like I said, it will just be a feeling. But the books I read influence me massively. My mood also influences my work. So before the pandemic hit, I was painting a lot more darker themes, they're a lot more sort of spooky and um, magical and the themes were just darker and then I was a bit uninspired for a couple of months when the pandemic hit and then when I came back to painting I was painting lots of flowers and I think that says something about how I think a lot of people were craving some hope with all the things that are going on in the world at the moment. Yeah, that, that seeped into my work in a massive way. I mean, I'm painting butterflies in this bloody painting, for God's sake. 
Um, and then Pinterest, it's a great resource. Everybody knows about it. I don't need to wax lyrical about it, but the way it shows you things that it thinks are relevant to what you're looking for, I think is really clever. But I've, one of the things I do with Pinterest is I, I go on like full on journeys through that app, <laughs> like proper rabbit holes. But I very rarely go back to my boards. I just let the reference, what I've seen on my screen in that moment in time, like percolate in my mind. And then it melds with other ideas I've had or music I'm listening to or other things that I've seen on Pinterest or Instagram or YouTube, whatever. And they kind of percolate and twist together and it creates something unique that's a bit more me rather than me trying to recreate the feeling from a single image from Pinterest. I don't find that particularly um, inspiring. So I've, yeah, I very rarely go back to my Pinterest boards, but it's a huge source of inspiration. Coffee cats, <laughs> Callie asked me the best snacks when working on a piece. So I tend not to eat when I'm painting. I'm quite crap at looking after myself and I forget to eat quite a lot. So I'm lucky that I have a husband that says, dinner <laughs> makes me break, come out of the painting fog and go and kind of look after myself. So I don't really eat, but I like these things called pop chips and they come in a barbecue flavour and I'm really liking those at the moment. And then I don't know if they have it in other areas of the world, but in the UK we have proper corn, which is normally a popcorn brand, but they started doing these crisps, um, sorry, chips for any Americans out there. They started doing these really nice crisps that I, they might take the top spot. So in general, a dark coke and some crisps will do me quite nicely while I'm painting, but but I don't normally, I normally forget to eat. Luke Davy asked me, how long do you draw and paint every day? How much drawing in comparison to painting? So I draw or paint every night, whether it's a small thing or I want to get a painting finished, I do it every single night after work. And I probably paint more than I draw which isn't necessarily a good thing, but I do find practicing techniques a lot more interesting than drawing. But it really depends on my mood because sometimes I really just want to sit down and study anatomy. So yeah, it depends on my mood. But yeah, every night, a couple of hours, on the weekend, a couple of hours. And then Eve, who is in my head under my bed on Instagram, she said, do you ever try and salvage paintings by going in a different direction? So she means like hiding stuff with layers or do I just throw it away? So I kind of touched on this earlier. If I'm not happy with something and I know it's going in the wrong direction, I will start again. And I know most mediums have an ugly phase to every painting, but I think when you know it's not working, it's not working. So I will... <laughs> I'm far too stubborn to accept it and move on to the next idea. I will throw it away and completely start again and I could be right at the very end of the painting and do something that I'm not happy with and start all over again. But I'm going to be posting these things on Patreon um, as the weeks go by and, you know, as they happen. And I think you can see, because I always save my bad versions. I look at them and I see an improvement in every single one and then those skills don't get forgotten as long as you continue practicing and you continue painting they stay in your mind and you go oh okay I did this wrong last time I'm not going to do that again <laughs> I learned my lesson already Tina over at I'm a Wonder asked me my favourite Disney villain I found this one really difficult to think about I um I think Ursula from The Little Mermaid just because she's curvaceous, she is confident, uh, she's unapologetic as well. But also I saw this video on YouTube a while ago where they were saying that her song is really sexist. But I've never seen that, you know her main song in The Little Mermaid, but I've never seen that song as sexist. I've seen it as her kind of eye rolling at men and kind of being like, can you believe that they behave like this? Like, <laughs> we're powerful, independent women. Um, so I've always seen it as sort of a, a sarcasm, but apparently it's not, which is a shame. Uh, so yeah, Ursula, 
But I always was fascinated with Jafar when I was a kid. When he becomes a genie, that was, I mean, I <laughs> was probably sat there like slack jaw open mouth, like as a four year old, like, wow. <laughs> Elezreal over on Instagram asked me what medium I'd like to try and that is, I've already tried it a bit, but I'd quite like to get better at gouache. I'm not very good at it and it's a completely different thing to watercolour. People keep saying it's the cousin to watercolours and I couldn't disagree more. It's, um, I find it quite difficult and I was saying earlier that I know how I want to paint with that medium and I can't do it the way I want to do it justice. So a lot more practice in the background will be done on that so that I can I can get better at it. She also asked me what my least favourite medium was and that's charcoal. I, I'm a mess. There's some beautiful charcoal work out there and it, most of it blows me away. It's incredible what people can do with it but I uh, <laughs> hate using it myself. <laughs> hate might be a strong word but still. <laughs> Wawalina asked me what part of your art do you enjoy the most sketching idea or painting and i think i kind of answered that question earlier but it depends on the concept if i've got a really cool concept in my head then i'm like yeah then i love the sketching process if i can't get a composition or a pose that i want down on the paper then i get frustrated with that and then i look forward to the painting um and coming up with the concepts I kind of let those just happen. I don't really go seeking them. Um, so sometimes I just start drawing or I'll do a little bit of research, you know, flicking through Pinterest or the internet in, in general. Then later on that night, I'll have an idea and I'll go, okay, cool. <laughs> I know what I want to draw now. <laughs> and then a new follower, my name is Rosine, over on Instagram, asked, I just found you, describe yourself in three words. So I think I would say, if you can't already tell from the rest of this video, <laughs> I would say that I am stubborn um, to a fault, admittedly. Don't mind admitting that. I am, this, this one isn't really, the second one isn't really one word. I'm an introverted extrovert. So I tend to overcompensate in social situations because they tend to make me nervous. And I'm very good at being by myself and in peace and quiet. I don't get particularly lonely and then occasionally I'm like right I need some I need some social time but I'm very good at being by myself and the third one I think is kind it's really simple I just think people should be treated with kindness and respect all the time so yeah that's that one <laughs> I'm gonna go back to one from Magical Sparkles because they asked well, what do you dislike most about the art community now there's not really anything that I don't like about the art community, but one thing that I don't like seeing is in the hashtags, so like watercolour or Copic markers or whatever, the top spots are generally always taken by art sharing accounts. And that just kind of winds me up a bit because I think those accounts shouldn't be getting the reach. I think the original artist should. And they can help you get new followers, but I just, it just frustrates me. I would rather see my friends or myself <laughs> at the top of that hashtag, if I'm really honest, rather than an art sharing account, because they didn't make the work. And it's as simple as that. And then the last one is from someone here on YouTube called Shelby who asked me, have you ever had patches where you just didn't feel any motivation to create and you had to take a break from it all? If so, how did you overcome it? Yeah, I did. I took 18 months off from 2018 into 2019. And up until that point, I had been doing lots of Disney and Pokemon fan art. And I moved out of London for a job. It was quite a lot of stress trying to get out of our contract and I mean relative stress so don't get me wrong like it's not it's not so serious but I found it quite a big upheaval with saying goodbye to lots of our friends who lived around the corner um, we wouldn't see them you know we wouldn't see them as easily as we had been up until that point and we were leaving a city that we really loved um, it was in London and it was a good move, but it was stressful. We were trying to get out of our rental contract and 
changing company that I'd been with for seven years. Um, it was a big change and I also just didn't really know what I wanted to do with my art. I was kind of a bit bored of what I was doing. So yeah, I kept my account and luckily not too many people unfollowed me while I was gone for all that time. And then when I came back, I started back with the Disney stuff, but very quickly started to kind of go in my own direction. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, I've got a video on here about how I went from Disney fan art to what I do now. Um, so you might find that interesting, but yeah, I, I don't know. I had to wait in that instance for the inspiration to come back to want to draw again. And it was a long old wait. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, if you're talking about like the pressures of social media and an art blog, I'd say just sit down with your favourite movie and take a break. Um, and if you need to take a break for like a week, take a break for a week. If you need to take a break for a month, just do it. Um, the people that really care about your work will still be there when you get back. And you can still be active on social media in your stories, and you can still post about stuff if you want to. But I think when everything becomes a bit too much, that's your brain and your feelings telling you, right, okay, you've had enough for a bit and you need to step back. So yeah, just take time, I would suggest. I think that's about all we've got time for, to be honest. I've got loads more questions that I can answer, but I will save them for another video. So if I haven't answered your question, don't worry, I'll tackle that next month. And I hope you enjoyed listening to me babble on about all this stuff. <laughs> As you'll know by now, I really like to chat, so hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions about what I've talked about today. But there's a little bit left to the video, so if you want to chill with the rest of the music and the rest of the video, then feel free, and I'll speak to you next time.